Looking at our world from a theological perspective, this is the Theology Central Podcast, making Theology Central. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to what I guess we're calling Church History Saturday, because we're doing a lot of church history discussion on this Saturday. But welcome, everyone. It is Saturday afternoon, May the 21st, 2022. It is currently 3.17 p.m. Central Time, and I'm coming to you live from Abilene, Texas. I don't know if you heard the two live broadcasts that we did this morning, but two plus hours discussing church history. And I thought, well, I I didn't think about this. To be honest, someone on YouTube left a comment and immediately I was like, well, I will grab the microphone and go live briefly to add to our discussion about church history and hopefully point you to a very interesting resource that could be greatly beneficial to you. Let me just try to do this as try to give you kind of a brief idea of where we have been. All right. This is what we did this morning, Saturday, May the 21st, 2022. We took some time to get in the time machine and go all the way back to May the 21st, 1922. So May the 21st, 1922, that's where we went back to. It was a Sunday morning. <laughs> someone on, and someone on YouTube made a comment that was funny. That, of course, it had to be a Sunday morning. Do you think liberals have Wednesday Wednesday night services? So that that that's... That was pretty funny. So we went back to time to May the 21st, 1922, to a Sunday morning at, at, let's see, what church was it? It was a Presbyterian church. I don't have the name of the church in front of me right here. Yes, First Presbyterian Church in New York City. So we went back in time, we walked in, we sat in the pew, and we listened to a sermon. Well, we didn't listen to it. I read it to you. I read a sermon that was preached on May the 21st, 1922, and many people believe that sermon divided America. I believe that we can clearly say that sermon really divided American Christianity. I think that's probably a better way of putting it. It definitely was a divisive sermon. Let me tell you a little bit about it just quickly. Uh, On May the 21st, 1922, Harry Emerson Fosdick fired a shot across the bow of, I'm going to say fundamentalism, the way one source has it, uh, shot a bow across or shot fired a shot across the bow of fundamentalist Presbyterians. I think it was against fundamentalism in general, but okay. Uh, And he did so in a sermon that he preached called Shall the Fundamentalist Win? Shall the Fundamentalist Win? It was delivered at First Presbyterian Church in New York City, and in the sermon he accused fundamentalists of being essentially illiberal and intolerant. Illiberal and intolerant. Fosdick's minced, he minced no words in defending the new modern theology and disputing traditional doctrines like, and he, and in the sermon, he, he, he goes after the doctrine of the virgin birth of Christ, the inerrancy of the Bible and Christ's substitutionary atonement on the cross and the physical bodily return of Jesus Christ. We could add that as well, because while we went through the whole sermon this morning, the, the sermon is unusual in that regard Few Protestant pastors in the early 1920s openly stated modernist doctrines to their often more conservative parishioners. And then what happened in response, the Presbyterian fundamentalists forced Fosdick to resign his pastorate in order to escape a formal trial in 1924. The incident made Fosdick a martyr to the liberal faction of mainline Christianity, but he found a new home at Park Avenue Baptist Church, and he found a new friend and John D. Rockefeller Jr., all right? So that's what happened. We talked about this this morning, two hours. We went through the entire sermon. I I, I messed up a few words, but I think for the most part, I hopefully provided you something very interesting and informative to kind of let you see what happened. The the main thing that I really want to point out is that the issue at this time is, is Christianity was being divided amongst, we can, we'll call this the fundamentalist, and the modernists, or fundamentalism and modernism. That was the division, but it was along theological lines. The the division was between, we can call it conservative theological perspectives versus liberal theological perspectives, but it was a theological division. It was a theological dispute over key doctrines of Christianity. It was a dispute 
And what is biblical Christianity and how do we define it? Listen to me, philologically speaking. Now, I was made the 21st, 1922. On, on May the 21st, 2022, I think the church is just as divided, but the issue now is between liberal, political liberalism and political conservatism, not philological. The church has been so politically hijacked that our, our division today, even though people may want to quote some scripture and try to talk about it, no, it's, it's a political ideological divide. And the and Christianity is being redefined along political political ideologies. That's the massive difference. And and May and May twenty first, nineteen twenty two, the issue was theology. May the twenty first, twenty twenty two, it's political ideology. That's what people have to see. And here's what happened: the church abandoned theology. The church became a circus. It became a place for seeker sensitive, you know, big numbers, attract people, and in depth theological studies be kind of, well, just became, nah, it, it, it just, people weren't interested. And so within that theological vacuum, well, people looked at all the problems in the world, and instead of going to their theology, instead of going to the Word of God to see what do we do about the problems in the world, they turned to politics. Politics, in turn, has infiltrated the church and is really raging a, a war, an insurgency. It's an insurgency within the church where the church is being redefined along political lines. So that, that is the big difference between May the 21st, 1922 and May the 21st, 2022. So, so that it, it's, it's just a fascinating thing to go back and listen. So we, we read, we spent two hours this morning reading Fosdick's sermon. Now you should go find it again. It's called Shell the Fundamentalist Win. You can find a copy on Amazon for your Kindle for like, I don't know, it was like a dollar. And uh, I would really recommend you downloading it and having it just because of its historical significance. You can have this historical sermon right there on your Kindle. Even if you don't have a Kindle, you can download the Kindle app for your mobile device and you can just have it right there in your library and you can download it whenever you want to read it. And I just think it's good to have because it's it's so important. It shows what the issues were at that time. They were theological. So I posted all of that. Everything was good. And But in that first episode that I did this morning, I asked a question like, hey, if I had everyone together, I said something like, if I had everyone together, I would say, so what significant event in church history happened in 1922, right? And someone on YouTube posted this. First, they quote me, what significant event happened in church history on May the 1st, 1922? And then they said, I would have said, it's got, it's got to have something to do with, and they post a name here. M-A-C-H-E-N. 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 Now, one, I thank you for at least thinking that I would know who that was. Okay. Uh, you, 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 get, you gave me the benefit of the doubt that I would know who that was. I did know who it was, but I, I, I do appreciate you, you thought at least that I had enough knowledge to, to know that. But to be fair, a lot of people, they see M-A-C-H-E-N and they're like, what is that? Who is that? What is that? Now, what is funny is no one seems to know how to pronounce the name because, because I was taught Mation. I think I was taught Mation in at least, I think, one school, Mation, but I've always, I've heard other people say Mackin. So is it Mackin? Is it Mation? I don't know. But the full name of the individual is J. Gresham Mackin or Mation, again, depending on who you listen to. J. Gresham Mation or Mackin. I'm going to go with Mackin. Um, maybe Mation. I don't know. I, I, it's just interesting. And, and to verify, I, I went and listened to a number of sources right before I decided to go live just to see, is there is there universal agreement on it? And, and there's not universal agreement on it, okay? I'm like, uh, wait, Mation, Mackin. There, there's all kinds of different ways of people saying it, but I, it's M-A-C-H-E-N. So I'm going to go with Mackin, even though I think I was taught differently. That just sounds today the way I want to go. Tomorrow, I may say it completely different. In fact, over the next few minutes, I may say it 15 different ways. But this is what you need to know, all right, because this is important. This person said, hey, what significant thing happened on May the 1st, 1922? 
And they said, well, what about Mac information? Well, to be fair, I think the, I now, we, we could go through a lot of history about J. Gresham uh, Mackin, but I think what we would point to is we would leave 1922 and we would move, we, we would leave May 1922 and we would move forward. I don't have the month and day in front of me. I should have looked this up, but you can look it up because, hey, it's Church History Saturday, so you can do a little research here. I don't know the day it was published, but in 1923, J. Gresham Mackin or Mason published a book called Christianity and Liberalism. We know this. It was published less than a year after the sermon. John Gresham Mackin or Mason argued in the book that historical Christianity and modernism were not simply two shades of the same faith but rather two completely different religions. Now, remember, Fosdick was kind of making the argument, Christianity is is big enough for modernism and fundamentalism. It's just two different flavors of of the same religion, and both are are perfectly acceptable. Gresham, or uh, Gresham, it's easier to say his name, or say it that way, giving his, uh, giving that part of his name instead of the Mackin or Mation. But Mackin or Mation comes along and says, no, they're not two different, they're not simply two shades of the same faith. They're completely different religions. And here's what's in- interesting. In the book, guess who he quotes? He quotes Fosdick. And guess what he quotes from? Fosdick's sermon. The famous sermon is quoted in this book demonstrating just how significant the sermon was. Because when people are start writing books, referencing your sermon, you know your sermon has had that kind of an impact, whether good or bad. Now, this is interesting. Before quoting Fosdick on penal substitutionary atonement, uh, Mackin or Mason states, and I quote, Upon the Christian doctrine of the cross, Modern liberals are never weary of pouring out their vile, out the vials of their hatred and their scorn. In other words, the liberals hated penal substitutionary atonement. They despised that doctrine. Now, if you go back to that time, 1923, you could, you could argue that Mackin's critique was kind of mild. It wasn't really like bombastic because there were other fundamentalists at that time basically saying Fosdick was inspired by a demon. Okay, so others were like, Fosdick is demon possessed and Mackin is just more like, hey, no, they're not, they're not two different shades of the same religion. They're two different religions. There's fundamentalism or biblical Christianity and there's your modernistic, modernist, liberal form of Christianity, which is not even Christianity. It's a completely separate religion. And that's what he put forth. Now, again, I don't have, see, do I have the, uh, no, I don't have the exact day it was published. I just know it was in 1923. I wish I had the month, uh, the month and the day. Now, if you are, if you're a part of the Theology Central Book Club, you got a notification probably about 30 minutes ago with a link to it that uh, you, you, you got an email. That's how you were notified. Um, of a Kindle version of this famous book, and I would challenge you to get it. Now, um, if you're not a member of the uh, Theology Central Book Club, simply look for Christianity and Liberalism by J. Gresham Mackin, and you should be able to find it. Uh, in the paperback, there's a paperback version or the Kindle version. The Kindle version is only 99 cents. So one of the great things about the Kindle and, and books in a digital format is it's a not only is it a cheap way to build a library of historically significant books, um, so it's it's cheap and you can get them instantaneously. You don't have to go try to drive from bookstore to bookstore to find it. You don't have to order it and wait for it to arrive. You don't have to try to go walking the shelves of a library. It's just right there instantaneous in your device, which is just makes, oh, well, it's a great way to spend your church history Saturday, all right, doing that. Here is a little bit about the book. All right, Christianity and Liberalism by J. Gresham, again, Mackin or Mason. Here we go. Since its initial publication in 1923, 
J. Gresham Mackin's classic treatment on the subject of orthodox Christian beliefs still stand as a compelling treatment on an all-important topic. In his classic defense, Mackin clarifies the basic understanding of the most fundamental Christian beliefs, uh, Christian beliefs and doctrine. Uh, God and man, the Bible, Christ, salvation, and the church, Christianity, uh, and the church. Christianity and liberalism remains just as true, useful, and informative today as when it was first published, which is why it was selected by multiple organizations as a top 100 book of its century. Read for yourself the true difference between Christianity and the counterfeit religion called liberalism. All right, now, again, I want to go back and just contrast May the 21st, 1922, or 1923, with May the 21st, 2022, or May the 21st, 2023. Well, I don't know what things are going to look like in 2023, but this is the, the state of things today. And I say this in podcast episode after podcast episode. And I know people, a lot of you disagree with me strongly, and that's okay. You have every right to be wrong. I'm joking, okay? Here we go. In 1922, you had Biblical Christianity. You had Orthodox Christianity. It was very present, and you could argue in many cases it was the uh, it was in the majority. And you had a clear attack. You had a clear threat forming with higher criticism coming out of Europe. You had the rise of modernism, and you had all of these things coming together to attack historical biblical Christianity. You had, the lines were drawn, right? You had Christianity. Here was its attack. In 2022, you have, I think, historical biblical Christianity. It is now in the minority. It's no longer in the majority. It's not even in the majority, even within the church, quote unquote. I think it's in the minority. And here's what's happening. It's being attacked in three ways, all right? In three ways. One, from the left, right? The political left. It's being attacked by a a liberal progressive, woke political ideology that's trying to rewrite Christianity in its image. So it's being attacked from the left. It's being attacked from the right by a very super ultra conservative Republican political ideology, which is trying to rewrite Christianity. Both of them are hijacking Christianity and trying to claim Christianity in some way, shape, or form for themselves. So there's attack from the left and right. And then there is an attack within, so it's, you have the left and the right, and then within the body of Christ, I think we have the, we have the attack of indifference or the, the, the feeling of apathy, There's a great apathy that is set in within the body of Christ. It's become apathetic. It's become complacent. It's become apathetic and complacent to the word of God, to church history, to doctrine, to theology, to serious Bible study. So you've got an indifference and a deadness happening within the church while while Christianity is trying to be redefined from a left political ideology and a right political ideology. That's how I classify and describe the world in 2022. Now, I know many disagree with it. Many just say, no, the problem is, uh, is that it's woke progressive Christian, woke uh, progressivism trying to destroy Christianity. It's critical race theory. It's, it's all of these things. That's where they focus, but they don't see that in many cases they are just adopting not biblical Christianity. They're not even turning to a biblical answer. They're turning to a worldly political outlook. And this is what has led Christianity into the mess that it is. However, it is important to go back to 1923, read J. Gresham Macon's book on Christianity and liberalism, and see what you can learn. It is 200 pages. Again, it's 99 cents. Okay. If, if I, I mean, hopefully you can afford that. If, if, you know, we, we, maybe we can give some physical copies away of the book at some time. We just had to, I would like to give away some copies of the book, um, but we just had a, as a church had to pay $998 to get the uh, air conditioning unit fixed. So I will have to see how much money we actually have. But if we have some, maybe I can give some copies away of this, of the paperback version of this book, if someone would like a copy. So maybe I can do that. So I will, I will, I will, uh, will announce a possible, I'll have to look and see. Um, I, I don't have access to anything. So I have to 
ask someone to, to see what we have. But uh, maybe we can give some copies away because I think it would be – well, it just goes along with everything we've done today. All right? So let's put it all together. Let's put it all together. Are you ready? All right. Here's what we've looked at today, and I think this is very important. And hopefully you found this to all to be very beneficial. On May the 21st, 1922, at the First Presbyterian Church in New York City, Harry Emerson Fosdick preached a sermon, Shall the Fundamentalist Win? It's a very significant book in the history of American Christianity and Christianity at large because it really brought in the modernist. It just it was just a full-blown, here is modernism, here is liberalism, and he did so with, I mean, just right there, blunt and in your face. And this really be, creates the massive divide and the division between the fundamentalist and the, well, the liberal or the modernist and modernism. A major significant thing happened there in church history. A, a, less than a year later, less than one year later, J. Gresham Macon, Macon or Mason wrote a book called Christianity and Liberalism. And that book really, well, is a defense for historical biblical Christianity, arguing that the modernism and the liberalism is not another shade of Christianity. It's an outright, it's a different religion. It's a completely different religion. And I think it's important for you to take some time this morning to read, or this afternoon, to read the book. So I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to hear, press here on the Kindle version and I'm going to purchase it um, because it's only 99 cents and I want a copy on my Kindle. So I would challenge you to do the same. If you cannot, if you cannot find the link on Amazon, email me, newsif at yahoo.com. That's newsif at yahoo.com and I'll be more than happy to send you the link and then we'll see if we can possibly give away some copies. I Look, the, what you really need, and let me see if I can find it here. What you really need, and I mean this, because all of this discussion about Fosdick and all of this really comes down to very uh, important book. I see here. Yes, here it is. The Fundamentals uh, by R.A. Torrey. Um, you you want the uh, you, here's the, here's one copy. It's seven ninety nine for the uh, Kindle, thirty four ninety nine for the. Uh, for the hardcover, the fundamentals, a testimony to the truth, complete and unabridged. First published as a four volume set in 1909, this is a complete and unabridged one volume edition. All 90 articles are included, split up into four sections. In 1909, God moved two Christian laymen to set aside a large sum of money for issuing 12 volumes. I think there were 12 paperbacks. Uh, that would set forth the fundamentals of the Christian faith and which were to be sent free to ministers of the gospel, missionaries, Sunday school superintendents, and others engaged in aggressive Christian work throughout the English-speaking world. What I want you to realize is they were going to give them away. That, that's what I think is so awesome about this. It's like, hey, we, we see this modernism. We see this liberalism. We see this higher critical, the, how to, higher criticism coming in, and we've got to take a stand against it. And so what they didn't do is like, I published a book because we've got to take a stand against this, and you can have it for twenty four ninety nine. No, here's 12 volumes, and we'll give it away. We're going to give it away to any workers, to as many people as we can, who can then take, take these books and use it for teaching purposes. I just love that because so many times I can't stand when I listen to Christian radio or something like, oh, the, you know, the this is going to happen and, um, and this doctrine is under attack and it's so important that you have the tools you need and you can have it for $24.99. I'm like, well, you're not so interested in me having it, are you? So, but I would highly rec recommend, well, I'm not high. Look, I've been begging people to read the fundamentals pretty much my whole Christian life. I, I, I make the joke all the time. You hear me sometimes during sermons I'll make a joke because those four volumes, the fundamentals, are sitting right behind my pulpit on a table. And I'm always like, read these books, read these books, read these books. And everyone just looks at me like, not going to do it, never going to do it, don't care to do it. And, uh, well, on, 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 a, on a day like this where we have the anniversary of such a significant sermon, that sermon really, it comes, it, it, you, I mean, you could argue that Fosdick, in some ways, and his sermon, 
was going after the fundamentals, was going after these 12 volumes. I, th I think you could make an argument there. I'm not saying he had them directly in mind, but I guarantee he was probably aware of them. So you can, well, you can look into that and see what you think. All right, we'll stop right there. I just wanted to bring this book to everyone's attention and we'll do more live broadcasting uh, some point later this afternoon or this evening or, or tonight or I don't know when. And of course, tomorrow we'll be doing live broadcasting. So, but uh, there you go. So thanks to the person on YouTube who just mentioned this because it was, it was, it was a brilliant mention. Um, 1923, not 1922. Now we probably could look at some things that Jay Gresham uh, Mackin did in 1922 and probably find things of significance. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying what comes to my mind is the book in 1923. That's what comes to my mind. I could be, there's probably maybe something even more significant in 1922. I just don't currently have the thought in my mind, but, um, that person bringing it up was, it's awesome because now everyone can benefit from it and everyone can go find Christian and liberal liberalism by J. Gresham Mack Mackin. And well, increase your understanding of church history. Very significant time in church history. All right, you had a lot, you really, to me, you had a lot going on in, in 1922. You really had, you had liberalism and higher criticism trying to destroy Christianity. You really, in my thing, the cancer of cancers was the, uh, the the rise of the modern day charismatic movement? That to me was the cancer. That was that was the cancer. Uh, I, I that's that's where I, it, it, the church I think did do a good job fighting against the liberalism. I think it did a good job fighting against it. It opened its doors ultimately and led in the charismatic movement that began to to build and grow. And I don't think anyone did much with it. And next thing you know. Look at it. It swept across Christianity like a cancer out of control. So that, that's, that's my feelings, but there you go. All right, thanks for listening. You can email me, newsif at yahoo.com, newsif at yahoo.com. We'll be back live at some point today. Thanks for listening.